Hey everybody, welcome to the round four review of the AFLW match between our Carlton Blues and the Richmond Tigers down at Icon Park, our spiritual home. Um, it was good to be back again. Uh, obviously, we had a bit of a, a break last week, given that we had a, a snap five-day lockdown. Um, Got to say, I was pretty worried last week that we were going to be going through um, you know, the whole lockdown thing again. I think it was a bit of PTSD in there. Um, but anyway, back at the footy, back at our home, um, hot day, really hot day, um, solid conditions for footy if you're playing. Um, if you're a fan sitting in the sun all day, uh, maybe not so much. Um, got a bit of got a bit of a sun, suntan, bit of color, so I'm not complaining with that at all. But yeah, I, I must say overall, obviously, I'm going to go through quarter by quarter as to how, how it all played out in my mind anyway. But overall, it was a really enjoyable game of football. It had a bit of everything. Um, it had disappointment. Um, I had a bounce back, I had uh, a moment where I thought we were going to lose the game and then we ended up um, um, holding on and you know had all the drama. So yeah, just a, a great day out there. Um, the first quarter was, I mean, we've done it three times this season. The Doggies game was not as bad because we ended up kicking a goal or two perhaps, um, but just there's something in the mentality of how these girls... And to be honest, the guys as well, how they start games. They don't come out with the same ferocity that they finish games with. And I guess if you're winning games, it's okay. It gets swept under the carpet. You, you can you can withstand it. But it's happening far too often now. I mean, three, three out of the, the four games we've played this season, we've come out just... I don't know if the word sluggish is the right word, but it's just... There's, there's just a... Um, you know, we're just second to the ball or second to the contest. And then it takes them a little bit to um, to figure out what they need to do. It's almost like they wait to be punched before they punch back. And that's a, that's a phrase that I've been using for the men <laughs> pretty much for the last two, three years now. So yeah, I thought I missed opportunities. Look, Vesio was pretty good throughout. The, well, one of our best, if not our best throughout the whole day. She had a, a great passage of play in the first quarter, took a brilliant mark, um, hit the post, I thought our kicking game was looking better early. Uh, Press Parkers hit Harris with a beautiful kick on the lead. Um, I thought Taylor Harris looked a little sore in the first quarter. She had the knee strapped. Um, I think she had it strapped last week as well. I don't remember 100%, but she looked to be limping at certain stages of that first quarter. And uh, I'm not sure if she's carrying anything, but uh, I did notice that from where I was sitting. Um, Lucy McAvoy, she seemed to have a pretty good influence on quite a few contests early in that, well, throughout the whole game, but particularly early in that first quarter, she seemed to be forward back in the midfield, wherever the ball was, she was, and I, I was pretty impressed with her, the way that she started. This, you know, <laughs> we're going to quarter time, and it's just that same old story. Those four goal runs that we give up, um, ended up being five because the... Um, uh, the Richmond ladies kicked the first goal of the second quarter uh, after Taylor Harris took a beautiful mark across half back, uh, but then kicked kicked the ball to the girl on the mark. So that wasn't that wasn't great. Press Parkus then got going. She kicked the first of her two for the term, and Hosking had a, a very very um, crucial uh, contest in that second quarter, which then. Um, which then allowed the ball to go forward. Lucy McAvoy read the play well. Great positioning for her goal. And then Press Barkers kicks her second. And uh, it was one of those wow moments. It was just a beautiful goal. Tight-ish angle. Very much needed in the context of the game as to where we were at just to solidify the comeback. And and then, uh, you know, I remember making a comment here saying, you know, goodness me, these girls have grit. And they do. And that's the one thing you can never question uh, the Carlton women is that no matter what is happening in the game, they can be four goals down, five goals down. They attack the contest um, in a manner that you can only be proud of as a fan, uh, especially when you're um, representing the club uh, that we adore. So that was that was a pretty good pretty good first half. Third quarter, Vestio just turned it on. Her leading patterns were elite. To be fair, the kicking was good as well. And, and I said this about the first quarter, but it really shown through that that was the best I've seen the girls kick the ball around across the field all season personally um, I'm not sure what the particular stats are on that or the percentages of the disposal efficiency or the kicking efficiency but just from the naked eye it looked like so many more passages of play were being set up through the kicking game um, I spoke last week about the handballing game that we have and that was still very much there on display and 
it's funny, I noticed quite a few times, you miss the sounds of the footy, you know, people who, you know, scream things like, kick the damn thing, or, um, you know, people, fans just wanting players to just kick the ball all the time. I'm not really in that school of thought. I get it. It can be, it can get you a little stuck when you handball too much, but um, if you're kicking blindly, that's generally going to be a turnover in today's game. So I noticed the kicking game was a lot better for, for us. Moa Lalawifi had an unbelievable contest across half back. Just the sidestep and the composure. And um, she links up really well with Grace Egan, who had a really good game again for the second week in a row. Um, and I, I like watching the two of them uh, link up that sort of defense midfield play moving forward. Um, as I said, Vesio's um, footwork, her leading patterns were great. She kicked three in the term. Um, it was, it was, it was just a, it was a, it was a great display and I think she needed it. She had shown flashes throughout some of the games this season, but she hadn't really put together a, a big quarter like that. And I, I've noticed that. I mean, Taylor Harris is very much the same. She's not necessarily a four quarter, uh, type player. She'll, she'll, you know, she'll lead and she'll provide a contest and she'll take the occasional contested mark, but she does a, the bulk of her work from what I've seen. And anyway, she does it in, in a patch and Vestio did that, but uh, that third quarter really just, it really just set up set the game up for us. Um, and I'm just happy for her to find some form in that regard and, and get rewarded with some goals. Fourth quarter, it was the carbon copy of what happened against the Dogs. It was just fell asleep. Richmond kicked two quick goals. Um, I know this is a Carlton fan channel, but can I just give a shout out to Monique Conti? She's a jet. Uh, I'd never seen her play. Um, I've heard about her. The name pops up. She, uh, you know, you see, you see these names of these good players, but I haven't watched her play live yet. And she, <laughs> as an opposition fan, she won me over. She's a star. Really enjoyed her game. But anyway, this is about the Carlton, the Carlton Football Club. I had written here in my notes that this has the doggies game written all over it. We were just grinding, gritting, just trying to wait for the siren. Um, there was a passage of play where the ball was kicked to the Richmond goal. And I think Gab Pound touched it on the line. Thank goodness, because that would have been a dagger in the heart because we'd done all the hard work to get back in the game. And I started thinking, okay, well, this is what happens when you start games like this. You get punished and you don't deserve to win. Um, but uh, irrespective of that, Georgia G really stepped up with some crucial just moments, um, passages of play, kicks. She sets up um, she sets up Nick Stevens for, for Nick Stevens' goal in that fourth quarter. Beautiful kick just to her advantage over the top of the defender from a tight angle on the boundary. It was it was very impressive. Um, Elise O'Day, I had written here, she won a crucial uh, contest. She was outnumbered, um, and I believe it was Monique Conti and someone else who had the pace on her, but... She, you know, Elise O'Day, and she, she's really warm to me. I'm really enjoying her. Um, never watched her play before this season. I didn't watch her play at Melbourne, but uh, just the way she goes about it, there's no doubt she's endeared herself to the club. And you, you do that through these passages of play, you know, how hard you're going at the at the contest. And moments like that definitely won me over. And, and that was it. Siren goes. We hear the Carlton theme song at Icon Park. Finally. And uh, happy days. Uh, great day at the footy. Really, really enjoy the day at the footy, uh, I must say. Um, I was sitting up in the Pratt stand and just enjoying you know, as much shade as I could get. Um, I'm not going to give votes, but there were four players that stood out who I, I usually try and give like a 3-2-1 um, and I write them down, but I, I really couldn't split these four. I thought Prasparkas, Vesio, Harrington and Egan were all fantastic. I mean, Jess Hosking as well deserves a mention. There's so many others that deserve a mention as well, but um, those are the ones that stood out for me. It could have something to do with the fact that these are the names that I'm just familiar with, um, which which hurts because I, I'm not familiar with all of them just yet, but I guess that'll come with time. Um, and even more importantly, I guess that's where it's your turn for those of you who watch the game and who are more familiar with the ladies. Um, let me know who your best players were if you have a, a ranking, a 3-2-1 vote ranking. Uh, give me your thoughts on the game. It was good to bump into a few of you there yesterday, and it was good to obviously um, be there. It was the Carlton Respects round, and um, yeah, it was just a, just a great cause and, and a great message. And uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, one that's very significant to me and in my experience. And yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there, and I'll let you continue on with the conversation about the game. And as always, goes without saying, go the Mighty Blues. Yeah.